Mark, have we been starting to start off 1980 the British punk movement as people like um, Shack Attack, I Level, Life of the World? What made Level 42 succeed where they failed? What do you think? Um, uh, of, I don't know. Uh, I think perhaps because, I mean, it might be the fact that we, we never ourselves thought, we, we sort of never saw ourselves as being part of that movement. We were a part of that movement, and I can see that now, but we didn't think we were at the time. And that's quite different, you know, because we, we, we weren't clubbing guys. We never used to go to clubs. We didn't, um, uh, I, I didn't have my finger on the pulse of what was happening at all. All I knew is that this guy, Andy Soika, who owned all his record shop up in um, Arsden, um, was going around saying, this is this great, you know, there was a chance for fun. And he just knew what, he knew what people wanted and said, you got he said, you play a lot of crap, but there's one record I really like. And that was the tune for Love Me To Love. And he said, if you get some geezer to sing it, he said, I'll record it for you. And we, we thought, shall we get someone to sing it? We didn't. We sung it ourselves. And uh, he pressed up 3,000 copies. And that, is, that sort of 3,000 copies were taken by what then became a, a hardcore of our fans. You know, and it's, um, it, it was sort of fluke. And we, I suppose the fact that we played a kind of, uh, a, a kind of funk music sort of to help nurture that thing but I don't think that we ever thought of that thing I could never really see us on soul shows or anything like that because it's not how we were I'm not knocking it but I'm just saying it's not how we were was it true that Polydor signed you for just five thousand pounds they certainly did yeah um you know but at the time that seemed like such a lot of money but well, it's such a lot of money now anyway you know that if uh, I probably probably couldn't get an assignment for that again I'm a dead.